Before we start this video, a large thank you to Rory McIntosh, Castercraft, Christian Babcock, Renee Steen Nielsen, Jordik, Eldegal, Talit Ospanov, TJ Marinda, Nathan IRX, Torlap Steerterbud, David Ward, Peter Strand, Eric Brown, and Sebastian Lurch. I know I am totally messing some of those up. Nonetheless, guys, thank you so much for your support. I hope you all enjoy the video. All right, guys, today let's double click on our enemy here, and we're going to right click, and we're going to UI, and we're going to add a canvas, and we're going to call this UI. We're going to set this uh, screen space, or uh, render mode rather, to world space. We're actually going to make a floating HP bar for our enemy here. So let's right click under that, and I'm going to uh, actually reset the transform this first so it's seated at the foot of our enemy. And I'm going to create an empty game object, and I'm going to call that health bar and we can actually copy the health bar we made for our character here to speed up this process quite a bit and I'm going to paste that as a child of this game object okay and next I'm going to reset the transform you're going to see it look like this and I'm going to make the width about uh, 1 and the height we'll say 0.2 and then I'm going to make the position of Y uh, 2 so it's over the enemy's head next I'm going to go to the health bar itself the background hold alt and click this bottom right icon and it actually just shapes it to the size of the uh, parent object okay so now we have a floating health bar for our enemy that's cool and works as intended but we need to actually set it up and uh, deduct it when we have actions going on like taking damage so let's get to doing that right now let's go to the health bar the parented one and let's add a component I'm gonna call it UI enemy health bar uh, and that's just going to control the UI component, uh, enemy health bar. So this is going to work very closely uh, to the way our other health bar script works on our player. Um, the only difference being, let's start up our namespace and erase the start and update method. The only difference being that we're going to add a couple more things to it. Um, mainly being we don't want it to appear all the time. So let's start by putting down slider. And we're actually going to need to say using UniEngine.UI. Okay, now let's say slider, and then on awake, we can say slider equals get component in children, because this is on the game object parented above the actual health bar itself. And you'll see why we're doing this momentarily, why it's not on the, uh, the same game object as the slider itself. The reason being we're going to be deactivating it when we're not attacking our enemy, and we need to keep the script running for the, uh, the check if we are being attacked. So let's start off by saying public void set health. And then we're going to pass an int called health. And let's open up the bracers here. We're going to say slider.value is equal to health. And then we're going to actually need to, uh, to set the slider's maximum value as well. Uh, but before that, we're going to say time until bar is hidden. I'm going to say equals three. And then we're going to make a float variable. And we're going to call it time until bar is hidden. And again, I'm going to set this up as three. And this is just going to represent how many seconds you have before the bar is hidden after the enemy has been attacked. So next we're going to say public void set max health. And we're going to pass an int max health. Now this will be called when the enemy stats are being set and calculated. We're going to say slider dot max value is equal to max health. And then we're going to say slider dot value is equal to max health. So when you start the scene up and your enemy's health is calculated based on his health level, uh, this will also set the HP bar's maximum value as well as set that health to that value as well. Okay, now we need to make an update method. And down here in this update method, we are going to say time until bar is hidden equals time until bar is hidden minus time dot delta time. Next, we're going to say if time until bar is hidden is less than or equal to zero, time until bar is hidden is equal to zero. And we're going to say slider dot game object dot set active false so this time reaches zero we have been attacked in at least three seconds you can change it whatever you want we're going to hide the slider and the health bar from the scene else we are going to say if slider dot game object active in the hierarchy is not true then we're going to activate it slider dot game object dot set active is equal to true Okay, very simple and very straightforward. So then we're going to say if slider dot value is less than or equal to zero, we're going to destroy the game object, this game object. That way there's no more uh, update function being called and that will save a bit on memory usage as well. 
All right, so we still have to do a couple more things. We actually have to set up where we're um, utilizing the set max health and set health values. On the player stats, it's actually handled after we take some damage. So we're going to do the exact same thing on the enemy stats. So let's go to the enemy here, double click enemy stats. All right, so here on start, as you can see, we're calculating our health. Before we get to that, let's actually make a public UI enemy health bar variable. We'll call that enemy health or enemy health bar. Let's save that. Next, we're going to say enemy health bar dot set health or set max health rather, and we'll pass the max health. Okay, now let's copy that and down where it says take damage, no animation. Let's paste that and replace set max health with set health. And then we're going to pass the current health. And let's copy this function again. And let's find where we take damage with an animation. And then we're going to set that right here, right under current health equals current health minus damage. And we'll save that. And we should be good to go, I think, in theory. So let's go down here now and let's actually drag the variable in on the enemy stats. So the health bar itself. Whoops. Yep, this one right here. It'll be the parent game object. Now if I start the scene here, we should see, okay, okay, I can see the health bar, so I'm actually meant to set the timer to zero, so it fades out good, the, the fade works. Now if I, before I do that, actually I'm just going to go into the script here, and I'm going to make it so the starting timer is not initialized at three, but it is initialized at zero. All right. Now, every time we call the set health function, which happens every time we get attacked, the enemy's health bar should change and edit. Perfect, cool. Now, if I attack him again, there you go. And if you wait three seconds, it fades away. Awesome. Okay, oh, we have an error, though. All right, let's see what's going on here. Okay, yeah, because it destroys the slider game object and it, it can't reference this anymore. That's, that's a simple fix. So we're just going to come up here and we're just going to say, if slider does not equal null, and then we're going to encapsulate all of our code in that if statement, and we are done. Cool, now it should work. I will go back to the game, I will hit play, and let's go up here and attack our enemy again. Okay, and locking on, doing the damage. Bar still fades as is intended, and when we kill him, yep, no errors. Cool. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. This will be the last one I record out of town. I am back in my office tomorrow, uh, so expect any irregularities to be remedied. If this video helped you, please leave a like and comment. It does help appease the YouTube algorithm gods, and I will see you in the next one.